The Sony A200 was released back in 2008. Now, at the time, this cost around $700. Nowadays, you can find it used for about $60. That's how much I paid for this one right here. So just what do you get with this 14-year-old camera? Well, there's a 10.2 megapixel CCD sensor, nine autofocus points, and a 2.7 inch 230K dot LCD screen. Build quality of the A200 is a combination of metal and plastic. You know, it's not as robust as their more professional cameras, but it is a really sturdy, solid, well-made camera. In terms of ergonomics, I will say that the grip is a little bit narrow though. It's one of those ones that kind of feels like it's built for if you had pirate hooks for hands. Like, you know, I mean, it's fine, it works, but it's not the most comfortable grip I've ever felt. Having said that, the overall user experience of the A200 is actually really good. Now, in terms of shutter speed, you've got up to 1 4,000th of a second. This was a more entry-level camera, so you're not gonna see 1 8,000th of a second. And in terms of flash sync speed, you've got up to 1 1 60th of a second or 1 1 25th of a second with active steady shot on. Oh, and P.S. This camera actually has steady shot like a relatively modern camera. As far as burst rate goes, you've got three frames per second pretty much unlimited in JPEG. And you've got three frames per second up to six frames in RAW. And if you're shooting both RAW and JPEG, you're only getting about three frames per second for three frames. So in that sense, this might not be the camera you avid sports shooters are looking for. Autofocus on the A200 is actually pretty good. You know, there is a lot of technology in this camera that was pretty advanced for its time. Admittedly, a lot of that technology actually came from Minolta, but having said that, it actually works pretty well and there are really cool features like pre-autofocus where the camera actually starts to focus when you put it up to your eye. That's a pretty cool feature and that was pretty advanced for 2008. <laughs> The menu system on the Sony A200 is pretty classic Sony, and anyone who's used to Sony menus will find this very familiar. It's even a little bit better than that in that it's not too big of a menu system, so everything's actually pretty well laid out and pretty easy to find. Uh, overall, haven't had any trouble finding anything in this menu system. Image quality on the A200 is absolutely phenomenal. You know, You've got this same 10.2 megapixel CCD sensor that's in the Sony A100 and also in the Nikon D200. I don't have an A100, but I do have a Nikon D200 and I've always loved the images coming out of that camera. I can't believe how much even more I love the images coming out of this camera and for a reason. See, I don't think it's necessarily Sony's color science or any type of twist that they're physically doing in their camera body. I think for me, what sells me on the images coming out of the A200 is the fact that I've shot the majority of these images on old Minolta lenses. That's gotta be kind of like the high point of using any of these old Sony A-mount cameras is this huge Minolta lens collection that's crazy affordable as of right now. I don't know, I, like unfortunately with these things as we come together as a community and we have these conversations about, it does tend to drive the prices up but having said that, right now, a lot of these Minolta lenses are still selling for around $15 to $30. To put it into perspective, I got this camera for $60 and I bought three lenses for this camera. I got a Sony A-mount 18 to 50 millimeter kit lens. I got a Minolta 50 millimeter F1.7 and I got a Minolta 70 to 210 millimeter F4 and all of those lenses together only cost around $45. You know, I was able to get a camera and three lenses for a little over $100, and that is absolutely outrageous. As someone like me who's always been a fan of these older CCD sensor cameras, you know, whether it's an Olympus E300, a Nikon D50, whatever, part of what has always drawn me to these is just how different they look from modern cameras. I've got to say, the Sony A200, especially when paired with these older Minolta lenses, looks very different. Now, if you're a scientist and your main concern is just 
technical stuff, you know, you're constantly staring at test charts and you're constantly zooming into 400% to stare at the corners. This probably means absolutely nothing to you, but if you're an artist, if you have a soul, if you're not a robot, if you actually have passion and you actually care about art, I think this camera, and in particular this camera with these Minolta lenses, this is something you really do need to check out. So is the Sony A200 worth it in 2022? Yeah, it definitely is. And this is a really interesting one for me. This camera and the Nikon D200, as I've already pointed out, share the exact same sensor. And I have my Nikon D200 first. And the D200, it's no secret, that's always been one of my all-time favorite cameras. I just love that camera. It especially not just the images coming from that camera, but also just the ergonomics. That is such a well-made professional camera and it just feels so good in your hands that most modern cameras even, I don't like them as much as I like the Nikon D200. So when I got the Sony A200, I was actually a little bit disappointed because the ergonomics are kind of bad and it just felt sort of plasticky, you know, and I was used to that really sturdy magnesium alloy from the Nikon D200. Plus, you know, with this A200, I've been using all these old Minolta lenses and they autofocus, but it's a really old-fashioned autofocus, like it's super loud and robotic. It just kind of sounds like R2-D2 freaking out or something. But um, I think that kind of added to like a weird user experience at first. Like I wasn't sure how I felt about the Sony A200. But the thing is, all the sample photos that you just watched, I shot those all like months ago. Like I think it was back in April or May that I took those pictures. I haven't seen them since then and I haven't used this camera since then. And as I was editing that bit together for this video, I was just blown away. I mean, those images had such an unbelievably magical quality to them. You know, in those images, they're all just everyday things. They're literally things that I see every day, things that I walk past every day, things that I take pictures of every day with every single camera that, you know, you guys see on this channel. But when I saw them from the Sony A200 with those Minolta lenses, especially, you know, that 50 millimeter lens and that also that 70 to 210, when I looked at those images, I felt like I was seeing those things for the very first time. Like that's how different this camera looks, this Sony A200 paired with those Minolta lenses. Like even the mundane looked magical through the eyes of this camera and these lenses. And I think for someone like me who loves vintage cameras, that's 100% what I'm actually looking for when I buy these cameras for making these videos. That's what I'm always on the hunt for. That's what I'm always trying to find. And that combination of Sony A200 and those old Minolta lenses, man, they have just blown me away. I guess that's the best way to put it. That's why I love the Sony A200 plus Minolta lenses so much is that combination just makes the mundane magical. You know, that's probably the best thing you could ever hope for as a photographer. And when you consider you're getting all of this at such a low price, that's absolutely insane. Uh, anyway, I think that's all I got for today, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.